All right, everybody. So today we have our flow thinking session, uh, like every Wednesday, every other Wednesday, which we're gonna push actually for once a month. So that it's more important the less we do it. Why? Because we gotta take advantage of every single second. So today, without much further ado, we wanna talk about a very important topic uh, that most of us have picked up either through a school or it's inherently part of us or it's something that we just do. And it has to do with proportions, proportions of spaces, relationship of spaces, and understanding that idea of proportion. Um, why, why is that important? Generally, it's important on my end because, and Julio is gonna touch upon that, because um, it is actually expected of us more than anybody else to understand where something is balanced and, and it's done uh, proportionally correct and it feels correct. We are in that art and science of architecture, that artistic part uh, has to do with that, with that proportion. Uh, when something looks, looks bizarre and horrible, it's because it's, it doesn't have good proportion. And it begins with you know simple things like our faces and nature and things like that. So with that being said, Julio's sharing his screen right now and he's gonna take it away. Well, guys, um, something like is a very basic uh, knowledge in, in any college. Let me know if you if you know this is the golden number. A gold number is basically a rule, a mathematical rule that exists in the nature. And it's basically how to make proportions of any space, uh, picture, um, any anything, you know. So to don't make it so crazy with the numbers is basically you start dividing any rectangle uh, object and you start dividing by thirds, you know, to create squares. So with that rule, you can organize any space, anything that maybe sounds weird and you would be like, wow, how, how that works, you know? But it's basically, when you apply this rule to any of your designs, believe me, it's going to start to organize everything. And in the first moment that you see it, you are like, oh, it's fine, works. Because sometimes we start to see some plants like they have like this long bathroom. And you're like, yeah, I mean, it has like 150 square of footage, like they ask, but that doesn't work, you know? It's like, oh, oh it's like a huge, bedroom and it's like oh it's super nice and you put the bed and it's like it's, it's just out of scale and proportion that's when we have a problem you know so that's when sometimes we cannot organize any space it's like we have a bad proportion in our corridors in our open spaces in our garage you know it's like on our closets you know we can see like a very long closet and a door in the middle and you're like that doesn't it's just not right, you know? And sometimes it's like some, some things that we have to train and train and train and train. To design is not a recipe, you know? Of course, this golden number is going to help you, but it's not like a recipe, like it's going to be for everything, you know? But if you if you follow this, it's, it's, nobody's going to say, oh, looks bad. Now I'm going to show you some examples of this way to organize the spaces. Just remember, you always divide in a third to create in a square and the rest again in the third and you create a square and again square 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 and it goes to the infinite you know so for example let me show you this picture what happens here you know so you have these spaces right so you have a room you you need to start to i mean it's going to sound weird but you're going to start in your mind on the paper, start to organize in the space and say, you know what, I'm going to do this rectangular area. Boom, I divide it in the third, I have a bedroom. This rectangular area, I divide it in third, I have another space like it's perfectly proportionate. And I have it, the other part, you divide it in a third and you can have a bathroom, closet, or whatever you want. Another example here, it's more clear this one. What happened here? You can see like the rectangular space here, right? They divide it in the third, they have the master bedroom already. They divide it in the third, they have the bathroom. 
at this book reading area. What happens here? They divide it. Dividing in a square, they have this space. Dividing this rectangular in a third, and they have this space here. The kitchen, how they start to organize in that rectangular areas and thirds. The garage, if you have a garage and you can deal with this proportional uh, uh, scales, it's going to work. You know, again, you see all these, they start to divide in thirds. Another space, you have a perfect square here. You have divided in the third of this. So now we're going to try to find it in these spaces like they're not marked. So what happened here? You know, it's like, all right, here, office, closet, and a bathroom. Did you see the rectangular area here? You see that they divided in third and in the third, you have it there, you know, the bathroom works, the office works, and the closet works, you know. This master, can you see how they did this rectangular here? Divided in third, these have another rectangular divided in third. So everything is going to start to have this proportion, you know. So that helps a lot when you're trying to organize spaces. Oh, this is a very many. Uh, did I open this? Yeah. This one. Again, can you see the rectangular uh, grid that they do or not? Somebody can tell me or not. You know, it's like, oh, I, I cannot see it. You know, it's like, all right, what happens here? Boom. They start dividing, right? Thirds. What happens here? They divide in the third, the kitchen and they do a rectangular area here, you know. What happens here connecting with the this space? Here, all these, the general thing is like they divide it here and they divide it here, they create a square and a third and all this third, you know. Of course, it doesn't have to be like exactly, you know, that you have a ruler and say like, oh my God, this is not the third, you know. Uh, real quick so what Julio is saying is not that you're going to start grabbing horrible proportions and dividing it into thirds all right so uh starting from from the get-go everybody here at the office should be familiar with the fact that a quarter should not be anywhere less than three feet like that's the minimum i would ever make a quarter that a closet should never be any less than two feet in depth okay that's what a closet is that you know you need to understand what goes inside in a bedroom you're going to have either a king size or a queen size or you know a small bed so you got to make sure that it works with what is going to be put in there and then you size your room thinking about you know your bed your side table a little bit more space and a little bit more space and then your bed walking space and then when you create that rectangle it works, generally speaking, right? And then when you start thinking about the bathroom and all of those other elements, well, you can add a third to those elements, right? So you say, okay, so this is this size. So what is a third of that is that? So I'm gonna grow by that much. And remember what a top size is. Remember what a sink size is. Remember the clearances of a sink. And then you start understanding this, right? These things happen intuitively. These plans that he took, they, he didn't, he, I put it on the spot today with this presentation. He didn't book a, look for a book on third. He really just grabbed plans and people intuitively, people that design intuitively understand that there is a relationship of one space versus the other when it comes to that. And I want you all to think about that uh, so that we don't design spaces that just don't work. Exactly. And you can see how they use it, you know. Okay, let's do this. So you create this is a square, you know. Now you have this, you divide here, and now you have the bathroom, and you have the entry. You know, you can start to use it in different ways. It doesn't have to be a perfect square because they designed like a perfect square here, all of these, and start to su subtract some things here and to create the design. But I'm just saying like that's going to help you a lot to organize spaces, to organize the spaces. The third, okay, let's take it. Oh, this is going to be the the corridor, and now you have the the perfect proportion for two bedrooms. And that's the way that can help you a lot in any 
I mean, it's a rule that you can always use and it's not going to be wrong, you know? But Now, Julio, if, if I was to tell you now quickly, I know it's on the spot and I don't want to put you on the spot. To think, <laughs> about, to think about a mini two-bedroom space with a kitchen, one floor, uh, on the right here, on any, on any white space, how do you go about thinking about that? It's a two-bedroom, right? And it's going to have a kitchen, it's going to have a dining room, it's going to have a living room. And it's going to have a little laundry area. So how would you sketch that out? Just thinking out like it, this is not right or wrong. It's just so that you guys see how he thinks. All right. Well, I mean, <laughs> I'm not like the master in a, nothing like that, man. You put me in the spot. like. <laughs> But again, we need to think how is going to be the proportions, right? I'm going to use this rule saying like, oh, okay, let's figure it out. Like the houses are rectangular, you know, or let's say, okay, you know what? Let's try to do this and let's try to, okay, you say like what? Okay. One floor space, all right. So you're like, okay, I'm going to say, which is going to be the social and private area, right? So again, this, all this is going to be social. All right, perfect. I have my square here. I, this is going to be the private. I have a not completely square, but there another rectangular, what I have to do, <laughs> if I need to find the way to create, if I said, okay, here you go, two bedrooms and the bathroom, is this really a bathroom? You know, like all this long, what's going to happen? We need to break it, right? We need to break it. So again, you see, this is the square and now I'm breaking it here. And I'm breaking it here. This is going to be the bathroom. What happened if it's, this is just a little foyer to get in? And now we have what happens here. We can put, break it again. This could be the closet. We can put the bed. And again. <laughs> well, so you know what I mean? So how we start to break it we take a little piece of this but we can take it another piece of here so okay we said like okay we resolve that just using that rule you know but it's just an easy way to proportion spaces and again you are creating more spaces like they're going to look nice with the all the layout you know in the end all this is like your corridor area like it's filtering everything and breaking the spaces to get in right? This is the bathroom. So, so you're like, all right, I have the, ma the the two bedrooms and the kitchen and whatever. Uh, I don't know. Now you have another square here. You're like, oh, we're going to break this. Should I put like here? And this could be the, in the third, this could be the living and here the kitchen the dining here maybe maybe not but at least you are creating more spaces like they're not going to be out of scale i don't know i mean this is a quick way i don't know but sometimes you have spaces like they're like this and you're like well, what are we going to do you need to start to organize in that spaces again in any plans like we've been seeing if not in not all of this they are using in the majority this kind of shit hold on to do this You know, you see the square here. Uh, da, 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 da. Hmm. I lose it. Yeah. Here. 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 Take the rectangle. Here. Here you go. The same here, you know, and what happened was like a big, spaces like they're going to start creating spaces, you see. So that could be a good technique if sometimes you have problem, you have problems to do proportions in your plan. So when you are like, Shit, I don't know how to organize this. I don't know how to start. 
you can use this rule and little by little you will see like oh okay it's working you know and that's being used in i don't know i, I was trying to look for some examples like i couldn't find it but like uh, uh you know so it's all the painters they use it all the architecture they use all the nature they use it all or parts of our body they're proportionate you know so when you do some job doing this that's like it's not going to be wrong you know what i mean just so like that's going to work i know it's kind of weird i don't know have you ever listen or hear about this but that's the first time like i hear about this i was like ah, that's bullshit you know how this works you know but it really works when you start to take dimensions of this so partenon how they start to take all the dimensions and everything starts to work with this proportion and more examples in the architecture you know so that can help you guys even when you take a picture you know the guys who study photography here. The same concept is here used in photography. And, and I want you to think about that when you're doing your renderings, for instance. So what it means is that if you line an object within a third, it tends to be much more powerful, right? So if you land the object on photography within that third, for instance, uh, the bottle is right on the third line, right? And that's what he was mentioning, dividing a, a, a space into three different lines and picking the third. That makes it much more powerful. If they land in the middle, it's also powerful, but it's much more interesting when something is not dead center, but actually on a third. See, the bird is on a third, the person is on a third, this guy is on a third, the little girl is on a third. Uh, even the umbrella person, if you think about it, is landing almost on a third with a pink umbrella. All of those landing on a third. I actually do that a lot when I'm rendering something or when I'm playing with Photoshop to make sure that the object I want to focus on is on a third. And from here on, you always will see thirds on almost everything. And it's because our eyes like that. Why fight something that is proven to be right, to be correct, right? Why fight it? So when you're designing something, same idea plays out. And I'm sure like if Julio was to open any four plan of, for instance, the Alien Eye project or whatever, you will see relationships where you will see elements that just happen to make sense. It will become second nature at some point that you will understand what's going on. You will, you will see it and you will like, okay, I, I know exactly what's going on in here. I know how it works. And it works, right? So um, just wanted to point that out. So that's that's it's, it's along those lines, and it's not about the number; it's just proportions. Exactly. So you know, and again, it has to do with the number <laughs> because it's it's third, right? It's dividing something into yeah. three, three pieces, but um, but at the same time, it's all about proportions. You will not see a house that's three times the length than the width. It's either two to one, right? You see, I mean, you will see anything. I'm not saying you will never see that, but I'm saying that two length to one, right? You see that proportion. The squares are okay, right? So those are compact forms, but you will not see six to one or six to one half it means people can't even walk in that space, right? It's tiny. So um, that's, that's and, and those are all of those rules. I want to see all of you to grow on that direction when you lay now a space. People that have picked it up pretty quickly, Yvonne picked that up pretty quickly here, by the way. She's understood proportions rather quickly. She doesn't know that she's doing it, but when I see a plan, I sometimes don't know whether uh, oh, Julio designed it or Yvonne designed it. So you're getting there, Yvonne. So it's getting to that point where you're like, oh, the proportions are right. It looks pretty straightforward. It's pretty good. It works. That's great. Yeah, and and again, it's it's not a recipe when you are designing. It's not a recipe to say, oh, yeah, you have to do this all the, you know. It's just when you have problems, to saying like, man, I just can't find the layout of this. I'm struggling with this. You can try this, and maybe you're already using this and you don't know it. You know, I mean, I don't know, guys, if you get this in the school or not. I mean. 
Anybody can anybody can jump in. I no, I didn't. I, I learned it because of Julio. Julio talked to me about this like yeah. a couple of months ago. So uh, I mean, yeah, that has to be like a, the first thing in architecture school. I don't know if in in the what about Carolina? Have you had to learn that at school? Yeah. What do you guys call it in Brazil? Yeah. I go in the movie school. Do you learn it? No. They didn't teach you proportions like that? Uh, with the golden number, no. But they, they, they taught you the, the rule of thirds or any... Sad, the rule of thirds, yes. It's pretty much the same idea. Okay. Is a proportional rule. Julio said it. He's dividing that element into third all the time. Um, but yeah, it's called the Fibonacci series also. Um, Fibonacci, yeah. Yeah. So, but that's that's super important. It's used in everything. People that are considered beautiful, if you look at them, the proportions in their face, not Trump, by the way, not that. <laughs> not that picture. I don't think that works. <laughs> but, um, but uh, <laughs> you can find anything. But it makes the point of what's what's supposed to be beautiful. They always show Angelina Jolie's face within that. I don't know why, but uh, but it's always like it's always interesting to see it. That you know, it's in nature, it's everywhere. Um, they use it in almost everything, um, and we relate to it. The packages of things. If you think about it, the way even you know a box is divided. You know, this box. This is a third of that whole X square. So like you can see it almost everywhere. Um, and it's for a reason, all right? So in general, why are we doing this? Why? One, as a guidance. When you don't know what to do, I start with that. You start there, right? Sometimes it's very scary to start with a blank piece of paper for a new project or new house or new addition and not know what to do. So you start with that. Of course, we have other elements like nature, views, and things like that that will start helping inform the special quality of that space but they don't necessarily inform the proportions of the space. The proportions are dictated by you and the, the uh, furniture and the use of the space. We don't want to see ever a corridor that's less than three feet. We don't want to see ever a closet unless, I mean, again, there's exceptions to the rule, but you got to know that. So when you show it to the client, you say, yeah, this closet is not two feet, which is the typical, but it is this because of what, right? Yeah, this stair is not, well, you wouldn't do a stair less than three feet. That's a co-violation anyway. But um, why would you do those things? That's the way you go about it. That's the way you correct. Uh, you can explain why it's not the typical, right? But the typical is always expected. Um, I'm getting a call now, but I'm going to. Yeah, on that, on that note, oh, sorry, Julio, you can jump No, in. no, go ahead, go ahead. No, I was just going to mention on that note of the, the corridor. Darwin keep mentioning about the, the three feet. Now, remember, guys, uh, the code applies in different situations, apply differently. So if it is a commercial space, definitely a three feet would not fly. Um, you know, three foot six, uh, four feet. I personally like to have five feet clearance in case it becomes like a ADA accessible route or anything like that. So for commercial spaces, uh, five feet is the way to go. Yeah, but sorry, Holy. No, and sometimes, you know, you, you know, when you are designing it's like, whoa, you, you, you don't have to have all these numbers like, oh my God, this two feet, three feet, six feet. This, you're going to get that with the time, right? With experience, but when you have it, that, good proportional space you know in a good proportion bedroom you will see it you will be like all right you're just going to see it you will be like yes this work and sometimes it happens to us so everybody it's like okay you see your bedroom your bathroom or your kitchen or whatever and you're like i don't know i don't even i don't even know how to put the furniture because you know like it's wrong you know you, because when you cannot even put the furniture it's like there's something wrong, you know, and it's okay. You know, it's like, it's always to find a way and keep working and keep working. This is like a, you know, when you do sports, you're not going to do the best game in the first time that you're playing soccer. Of course not. You know, those guys, they train every day, 10 hours a day. And, you know, so this is the same architecture is like training and testing and testing and testing but at least you need to know that there are some tricks like this you know and that can help you 
you know sometimes i was the same when i was in the school i was like ah, it's just bullshit i'm not going to use that because i'm a i'm a rebel i'm not going to do that you know and now you are in the professional field and you're like shit that's true that works you know i'm just going to use it right away because i need to do this design in one day you know so it's like use it you know there are some tools that you can use like that and this is what separates you know the average person that watches hd tv and learned a little bit about architecture and design from watching tv and they think they're designers versus us who actually take the practice of architecture and design and interior architecture seriously this is not a joke this is not a hobby this is not something we do part-time this is something we do full-time this is what we make the big box for or hopefully we'll make the big box for right so that's what we do. We take it very, very seriously. So uh, I know I, I didn't pay attention to the golden section that much when I was at school either. I didn't know what it was and how it worked. But I started designing some bizarre relationships and spaces and I was like, ah, something isn't right. And then I began to develop that, well, let's start, you know, it's like if you're cooking, let's make sure it at least tastes okay. <laughs> let's start with the taste, it tastes okay. Now, how do we make that taste amazing? So you started with that and then you figure out what other ingredients you need to put into the recipe and what you need to take away. Well, you start with that very simple thing. We've, we've seen it all, right? Uh, I mean, here at the office, most of us have grown substantially, exponentially, and we want people to keep growing. So we don't necessarily see the silly things anymore, but now we gotta get to the next level, right? I can't just rely on a couple of people here at Flow to design certain things. I want all of you to be able to design anything, right? And it, it turned out to be amazing. So, um, you know, Julio has been getting a lot of the load from me because he's a, you know, he's a senior. He lost hair already too. So, but I want all of you to be able to pick up on that level and develop designs on that level, right? Um, and that's, that's, that's the key. So, yeah, I mean, guys, if you have any questions, or any, I mean, maybe you have your tricks or you are like, yeah, that doesn't work. That's bullshit. <laughs> Just say it, you know, this is, you know, it's, it's like, I remember when I was in school and I was like this nerdy guys that they came with their designs with, oh, I did my design with the golden number. And the, the professor was just, oh, perfect. A, you were like. <laughs> that happened to me too. It's like that bastard. Yeah, that, that happened. That happened. It, it, I, I remember also walking into a classroom back in the Dominican Republic. So it was a studio three, a design three. And I was actually in studio one. Um, and it was actually I was in studio two. And this is where they teach you about the golden section there. And they teach you about that with the uh, use of spaces, like how to use spaces and like it starts with the Le Corbusier modulor. We can actually look, look, look that one up. So is Le Corbusier, who probably you should know by now, is a French, <laughs> French no, architect. I don't think so. <laughs> uh, so. So Le Corbusier uh, created this modulor and it's based on human proportions. And human proportions land within that golden ratio. And well, long story short, um i create and that's all that's the modular that's all about that proportions and divisions of this element so um have you seen that Igo? so that's golden section right there that is the that is the field when I so and this is they show it in metric but it works in feet too it, it works in everything so long story short i did this very conceptual model for my design two and this person is in design three and i walked into that class and i hear the professor talking about proportions and he's saying oh because of the proportion because of this because of nature because of all these designs they should have already known that on design from design two but they didn't know it and i grab my model from another class and i give it to a person from that class and i say tell him that was your project he grabbed it put it in front and say hey professor this is this what you're talking about this is my model and the professor was like that is exactly what i'm talking about he didn't even see it he didn't measure it he knew it when he saw it and i picked it up right away i was like all everybody was doing these bizarre relationships that didn't make any sense but this was clean and pure and beautiful and he immediately picked it up so the guy got an a with my model and i got an a on my own there was a double dipping right there that was kind of cheating but it worked but yeah but that i mean it takes time to understand this I mean, 
I, I to me it took me a lot of time to understand this like it's not that easy you know because this experience you need time and time and time and time and time but i mean guys if you use this tool it would be amazing you know i think like we're going to have an extra tool to design and all right perfect so with that being said i don't have much more to add and you know we have a whole lot of work mark you want to add anything at all we're good i think we're good yeah so we're gonna you know keep on going keep on grinding um thank you julio for jumping on this so quickly without much notice or preparation um but it was it was it was great um anything you guys learn or pick up throughout your days throughout your regular working time or non-working time if there's anything you want to share with us this uh this is like a moment where before um like let's say the next one we're probably going to schedule for a month from now i want you guys to have that chance like for instance carolina is very into like technology uh I'm not sure how she picked it up but she showed us some stuff last week that maybe she does a presentation on let's say vr sharing screens using our projectors and how to grab a model from revit and sharing it with clients and exporting it in multiple ways that's cool stuff i want some of you to pick that up the load of pushing flow forward is not just on me or marcos or julio it's all of you and if you all contribute to flow getting to the next level trust me it comes back in dividends right there's a reward for everything right so um uh, I want all of you to think about flow always like, like, is you, you are flow. In fact, you are, you're meeting with clients, you're doing presentations, you're talking to them and everywhere you go, you have a flow flag, whether you see it or not. That being said, thank you very much, everybody.